Welcome to Music with Martha. And today we are going to talk about making a kitchen band uh, and playing percussion instruments with things you can find in your kitchen. And there are three rules when building a kitchen band at home. And that is one, ask permission before you borrow anything from the kitchen. Rule number two, ask for help if you're looking for an item similar to what I show you here, or if you just need help with one of the items. And number three, offer to help wash the dishes before you put everything away. So let's get started. I tried to pick items that you probably have in your kitchen. And when we talk about percussion instruments, we talk about mallets or sticks, so we need something similar uh, from our kitchen. So I have a wooden spoon, a wire whisk, you might have something, might not look exactly like this, but you might have something similar, and a rubber spatula or scraper. Um, this one's a, a skinny one, you might have one that's a little bit wider. All right, so these are all things that we can tap with. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. And probably the most common item that you have in your kitchen is some pots and pans. And I picked two that are different sizes, All right? I got a small one and a big one. And if you remember from past music classes with me, that small makes a high sound or should, big makes a low sound. And that should work most of the time with your um, with your kitchen items. Uh, so um, let's get started. I'm gonna pick up the small one and I'm gonna tap it. Um, I think I'll just use the small end of my wooden spoon. All right. So we know what that sounds like. Let's see. Does the big one is the big one lower? It is a little bit lower. All right, so we have a high sound and a low sound. So that's what if we use the pots. Now my pots have lids, all right? And so I have the small lid here and the big lid here, right? So the two different sized lids. And, and let's see, that should, that should happen also, right? But let's see what happens if I hold it and tap it. That's the small lid. And this is the big lid. All right? Definitely higher and lower. And the cool thing about this is, because it has sort of that bell sound, when I first hit it, it's a, it's a sharp sound. And then as time goes on, the sound waves start to get slower. And so the sound gets lower. Those are called the overtones. And I'm gonna tap it a little bit closer to the microphone. So hopefully it's not too loud for you. Um, when I first strike it, I'll try to be a little, a little more gentle when I strike it. Um, but let's listen if you can hear those overtones if I hold it a little bit closer. All right, it goes for quite a while. I can feel the vibrations in my, in my fingers where I'm holding the lid. Let's listen to the bigger lid. All right, so it rings for quite a while when we, when we play the lids that way. Another way to play the lids is like cymbals, crash cymbals. My lids just happen to fit right inside each other. Now I can do it that way and let them ring, or I can make them like a mouth and just make them. And that would be more like the hi hat on a drum set. Oh, I should hold it this way so you can see what I'm doing. And if I put it down, then it doesn't really ring very long. If I, right, it'll ring for quite a while that way. All right, so that's what happens when we do the lids. Now let's talk about um, 
plastic. You probably all have some kind of plastic container in your kitchen cupboard or drawers. Um, two different sizes again, the small one and a large one. All right, and the same thing should happen. Small should be high. Big should be low. That's, that works pretty well. Now, I'm gonna tip the screen a little bit so you can see my messy pile of stuff we have small. That works. So let's see what happens if I use these. That doesn't work. Let's try this way. High and low, right? High and low. Um, and let's do the wire whisk. Now I almost get more vibrations from the from the wires hitting each other. All right, so we get a couple different sounds. So that's what happens if we use plastic. Now I have plastic measuring cups. I have the metal ones too. And the metal ones, surprisingly, doesn't work the way we would think it would. So we have much, I have really little ones and, and bigger ones, right? They come in four different sizes. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna try to make some, make some more room. Kind of like a music class in school. A little disorganized sometimes, right? All right, so we have. Oh, let's move them so you can see them here. I'll put them closer to me. All right. Now let's see what happens. Let's line them up right there. Hmm. So there's not really a lot of difference. This one is not the smallest, and I think it has the highest sound. He's a little bit, you can hear the difference. Um, that's a little surprising, this little one. All right, so let's quick stack these up. I happen to have some um, plastic measuring cups. Um, you'll just have to look and see what you have at home. These measuring cups, oops, I have, um, have been in my house um, since at least probably before I was born. I'm gonna guess that maybe my parents got these measuring cups when they got married. Um, and that was quite a while ago. And now I have them and use them. Um, but I have some plastic ones. Actually, I actually have five um, of the plastic ones. I, have, I like the metal ones better when I'm cooking. Um, so let's see what happens. I think we'll have a little better, uh, we'll have a little bit better luck with the, um, with these. Okay, here we go. That one worked pretty well. Let's try, I'm gonna use the handle end of my scraper, of my spatula. Kind of works a little xylophone. I'm not sure I can play a song. So Mary had a little lamb. Um, not quite in tune, but it worked. All right, so we can make a little xylophone out of measuring cups. Um, I do have with me some metal bowls. I have lots of different sizes. Quite a large one. Um, the sun's going to reflect off there. It's going to be really bright. So lots of different sizes. Um, now, these, you can already hear them kind of chiming when I play them. Okay, I, I don't want to hold it too much because the more I hold it, the less it's going to ring. Right? And I think we'll find out that where I hit it. Wow. That was really loud. All right? So, so it sounds definitely different if I hit it on the side versus if I hit it on the bottom. All right? 
right? So I think we could call the neighbors to dinner if we hit that loud enough, right? Um, right let's see what... That one's a lot higher, isn't it? And then let's see if I do this one. Hmm, now once again, we have the odd situation of the smallest one does not really make the highest sound, I don't think. Oh yeah, it does, it is higher, it is higher. See, we're experimenting together. Lots of overtones too. You can hear those as the sound waves slow down, it gets lower and um, the, metal, the metal is vibrating. So lots of cool sounds we can make with our kitchen. And last but not least, and this is one of those where you might wanna ask for some help. So I have two, con two plastic containers with lids. Um, and in one, here I'll pull it out so you can see, in one I have some rice. All right, so let's put the rice in that one. Um, and it has a screw on lid. So that kind of helps ensure the lid doesn't come off while I'm shaking it. And if you um, are the are the, the, the um, type of student um, that really likes to feel things and experiment and you want to unscrew the lid, maybe um, you can ask for a container that you can glue the lid on. Um, and it won't, and it, it's okay if you do that ask for permission and ask for help, don't forget. Um, and then in this one, I actually have some dry oatmeal, all right? And, I, and I'm and i choosing two different things because I think we're gonna get a different sound. Dry oatmeal is a little bit softer um, than hard, dry rice. So I think we'll hear the difference. So this one's a little muffled, a little quieter. And this one's a little low. So we can have kind of two different shakers. Right. And, and one thing with shaking um, a shaker is, is try making um, the sound. I'm, here, oh, if I hold it back, it's not quite so much in the sun, is it? Um, try making loud sounds and soft sounds. All right. And if you do it and the beat. Okay, so we can get some different sounds. Last but not least, probably my favorite um, kitchen percussion instrument is I have a wire rack that you use um, to, to cool items. Like if you um, take a pie or something delicious out of the oven and you need it to cool off, this keeps it up off the, off the counter um, and, and it protects your counter and it has these cool wire racks. And this is the f this to me is my my favorite again. Um, so here's the wooden spoon. And here is the spatula. And here is the wire whisk. whisk. Oh, move that out of the way. All right, so we can get some fun, fun sounds out of a wire rack. I can even use my, the back of my fingers. Um, I can use the front, but I can use my fingernails, right? To make a sound. So that's, that's fun. So I want you to um, play your favorite song, no matter what it is. I'm gonna guess that your favorite song is in four, four time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And find three things from your kitchen band that you just made. Can you find three items? I am going to use, I'm gonna use this, put my rack down. Um, I'm gonna use the bigger of my two plastic bowls. All right, it's kind of gonna be my bass drum. And on this one, you can keep the beat. Keep the beat with that one. Now, 
I think I will use the lids for my pots. And on for the lids, for the kind of cymbal sound or hi-hat sound, we're gonna do two and four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. End it with a big clang, right? And then maybe with my shaker, Find the one with the rice in it. With the shaker, we can do um, the the half beats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Do you hear? I'm trying to make one, two, three. I'm trying to make the beat a little louder. So listen to your favorite song. Try and hear the percussion in the background and match those sounds, match those rhythms. Um, maybe the rhythm changes, maybe the feel of the song changes. You have a verse and a chorus, um, the, the part that in the middle that repeats itself several times and the percussion changes and you can change your, um, your band uh, to fit those, uh, those sounds in the song you're listening to. And um, if you have other people in your household, you can ask them to join you, assign them one of the instruments, assign them the rhythm they, they should play, um, just like we do in the classroom. Um, so um, find somebody in your household to play the bass drum and tell them, play on the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Find somebody else to have the shaker and do one and two and three. And then someone else could have the symbols. One, two, oh, let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And I know that some of you out there like to do two things at once. Um, that is not my, my forte. My, that means I'm not great at that, um, but you can. Um, part of that is because I have a really dominant right hand. Um, all right, so try different, try, try some different um, rhythms, see if you can do two things at once. Um, and play along to your favorite song. Thank you so much for joining me for Music with Martha, and I hope you enjoy um, playing and making a kitchen band. And one more thing, if you found something in your kitchen that makes a really cool sound that I didn't show you here today, um, let your teacher know, You let your classroom teacher know, or respond um, to my classroom link and let me know what you found. Um, and I'll look for it in my kitchen too. And maybe the next time I make a video, then I can play along with you. And you can give me some new ideas for making a kitchen band. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.